quarter four, quiz number two, review sections eight, one, and eight, two. Um, our first section here that we are working on, on comes from 8.1. We're just drawing these angles of rotation. So if with number one, we have a negative 390 degrees. So what we're going to do is we are going to start our initial side at our positive x-axis, and we are going to go down and around. 360 is a full rotation. So we want to go just below the 360 and make sure that we draw our arrow around and then represent it as a negative 390 degrees. For two, we're given 315 degrees. So again, we're going to start that initial side on that positive x-axis. From here, we are going to go up and around to 315. So that's about here. And then just draw your circular arrow and designate that it's 315 degrees. For number three, you have negative 120 degrees. So we are going to draw our initial side here. And then that negative 120, we're going to go up to 90. Then we have 180. So that 120 is going to be about here. And we just open it up that way. And we have negative, oh, sorry, negative. Pay attention, Liz. Here we go. All right, so starting from the beginning, we start at that, um, that initial side on the positive x-axis, then we're going to go down instead. So this would be instead negative 90, negative 180. So our terminal side is going to be about here, and then it's just going to open down, negative 120. All right, so for, we have... 240 degrees, so we start that initial side on the positive x-axis. We're going to go up and around, so this is 90 degrees, this is 180, this is 270, so 240 is going to be about here. And then our circular arrow just goes up and around. For 5, we have negative 585, so we're going to start that initial side length on our um, positive x-axis. We are going to go down and to the left. So this is going to be a negative rotation. So down to the left all the way around is negative 360. Then we have about in this quadrant we are going to have our negative 585. So again we went down and around to the left all the way around and then up or sorry down and to the left again up to that second quadrant and this is giving us a negative 585 degrees. For the next section with an 8, 1, we are finding the measures of a positive angle and a negative angle that are coterminal with each given angle. For number 6, we're given theta is 28 degrees. So if we take this 28 and we add 360 to it, we're going to be left with 388 degrees. If we subtract 360 from it, we have negative 332 degrees. So those are our two coterminal co angles. For 7, we have 250 degrees. If we add 360 to that, we're at 610. If we subtract 360 from that, we are going to be at negative 110 degrees. For number 6, Eight, we have theta is 70, or sorry, 740 degrees. So if we take that 740 degrees and we add 360 to it, we are going to get, or actually, we shouldn't be adding 360 to it. We should just be subtracting 360 from it. Um, if we do that, the 740 minus 360 gives us 380. That's still not less than um, 360, so we're going to subtract 360 from that again, and we get 20. From that 20, then we're going to subtract 360 from that and get our negative angle, which is negative 340 degrees. So 20 degrees and negative 340 degrees are our coterminal angles for the 740. For 9, we have negative 6 degrees, so that negative 6 plus 360 gives us 354 degrees. And then that negative 6 minus 360 gives us negative 366 degrees. For 10, if we take the negative 370 and we subtract 
uh, 360 from it, we're going to get a negative 10 degrees. And then if we add 360 to it, we're going to get 350 degrees. For 11, we're given 515 degrees. So we take that 515 and we subtract 360 from it because it's larger than 360. We get a positive 155. We're good with that. So that's going to be our positive coterminal angle. Uh, from there, the 155 minus 360 gives us negative 205 degrees. So those are our two coterminal angles. For 12, we have negative 93 degrees. So we're going to add 360 to that. We get a positive 267 degrees. And then the negative 93, we're going to subtract 360 from it. And we get a... A negative 453 degrees. For 13 we have 162 degrees so we're going to take that 162 we're going to add 360 to it we get 522 degrees then we're going to take that 162 and subtract 360 from it and we get a negative 198 degrees. For 14 through 25, we're finding the measure of the reference angle for each given angle. So remember, with these, you want positive acute angles. So positive acute angles. If we look at 14, we have 475. If we subtract 360 from that, we're left at 115 degrees. That doesn't give us a positive coterminal, or sorry, a positive acute angle. That's an obtuse angle. So we are going to subtract 180 from this and we're left with 65 degrees so if we take the 180 if we subtract 360 from this we are getting 115 degrees but that's not an acute angle so we're going to do 180 minus 115 which is 65 degrees so the 65 degrees is your answer here for 15 we're given 112 degrees if we take 365 and we subtract 212, we are getting 148. Uh, that is not what we're looking for. So we're going to do 180 minus 148, and we get 32 degrees. That's a positive acute angle, so we're good. For 16, we're, we're given negative 115 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 180 and subtract the 115 from it. When I do that, I get 65 degrees. That's a positive acute angle, so that's my number I'm looking for. For 17, we're given 740 degrees. So if we take that 740 and we subtract 360 from it, 740 minus 360 gives us 380. So from here, we're going to take the 380 and we're going to subtract 360 from that and we get 20 degrees. The 20 degrees is a positive acute angle, so that's our answer. For 18, we have negative 96 degrees, so we're going to add 180 to this. So we're actually going to take 180 and subtract 96 from it. When we do that, we get 84 degrees. So that's our answer. For 19, we're given negative 401. So we're going to take this number and actually turn it into a positive and subtract 360 from it. So 401 minus 360 gives us 41 degrees. For 20, theta is 320 degrees, so we're just going to do 360 minus 320, which gives us 40 degrees. For 21, we have a negative 722, so we're going to turn this into a positive and subtract 360 from it. So 722 minus 360 gives us 362. So instead of doing 180 with this, we're going to take the 362 and subtract 360 from it, and that gives us 2 degrees. So that is our positive acute angle.
for 22, theta is 292. So we're going to take the 292, subtract 180 from it. It gives us 212. So if we look at this, this is not a positive acute angle. It's a positive obtuse angle, but not an acute. So we're going to do 360 minus 292. And that gives us 68 degrees. That is the acute angle that we're looking for. So that's our answer. For 23, we are given that theta is 850, negative 850 degrees. So for this one, we are going to turn this into a positive and subtract 360 from it. The 850 minus 360 gives us 490, oops, from here that 490 is not less than 360, so we're going to subtract 360 from that as well, and we get 130, that 130 is not an acute angle, so we're going to take the 130, and actually we're going to subtract 130 from 180, since it is smaller than 180, and we are left with 50 degrees. That is our positive acute angle, so that's our reference angle. For 24, we're given 1,000 degrees, so we are going to take 1,000 and subtract 360 from it. So 1,000 minus 360 gives us 640 degrees. That 640 is not less than 360, so we're going to subtract 360 from that as well. So 640 minus 360 gives us 280 degrees. That's not what we're looking for either. So we're going to actually take 360 and subtract 280 from it. Uh, 360 minus 280 gives us 80 degrees. So that is our positive acute angle. For 25, it's a negative 1,000, so we're going to do the same exact thing that we did with a positive 1,000. We're going to turn it into a positive, subtract 360 from it. We get 640 degrees. 640 is not less than 360 again, so we're going to take the 640 and subtract 360 from it. We get 280. From the 280, we are going to subtract that from 360, and that gives us our... Um, 80 degrees. For our 8.2 questions, I'm actually going to be finding the sine, cosine, tangent, as well as cosecant, secant, and cotangent for um, these 1 through 4 and uh, the last question here. So, for one, we are given a right triangle with side lengths of 50, 48, and 14. Identify your opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse first. Be the easiest thing for you to do and make your life a lot easier here. So if we do this, our hypotenuse is across from that, that right angle. So the 50 is our hypotenuse. Across from our theta is our opposite. And next to our theta is our adjacent. So if we want to identify these, our opposite is 48, our adjacent is 14, and our hypotenuse is 50. Oops, equals 50. There we go. All right, so sine opposite over hypotenuse, that gives us 48 over 50, which if we simplify is 24 over 25. Our cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Our adjacent is 14. Our hypotenuse is 50. So if we simplify, that's 7 over 25. For tangent, we have opposite over adjacent. Our opposite is the 48. Our adjacent is the 14. So this is 24 over 7. And then for our reciprocals, this reciprocal sign is cosecant. So that's reciprocal of 24 over 25, which is 25 over 24. 
The reciprocal of cosine is secant, so that's going to be 25 over 7. And then the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent, so that is 7 over 24. For two, I'm actually, for the rest of these, going to go to a place where there's a little written and there's a little bit more room with them. So for two, we have the triangle of 24, 40, and 32 side lengths. Our theta is given to us in our lower right corner. So our hypotenuse is across from the right angle. Our opposite is across from theta. And our adjacent is next to theta. So our opposite is 24, our adjacent is 32, and our hypotenuse is 40. So sine is opposite over adjacent. That's going to be 24 over 40, which gives us, if we divide both of these by 8, 3 over 5. For cosine, we have adjacent over hypotenuse, that's 32 over 40. And again, if we divide both of these by 8, we get 4 over 5. For tangent, we have opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be 24 over 40, or sorry, 24 over 32. We divide both by 8, and we get 3 over over 4. If we take the reciprocals of these, your cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite, so that's 40 over 24, which gives us 5 over 3. For our secant, we have hypotenuse over adjacent, so it's going to be 5 over 4 when it's simplified. And for cotangent, we have adjacent over hypotenuse, so when it's simplified, that's 4 over 3. So our sine is 3 over 5. Cosine is 4 over 5. Tangent is 3 over 4. Cosecant is 5 over 3. Secant is 5 over 4 and cotangent is 4 over 3. So all of these down here are your answers. For your next one, we are given this triangle here with side lengths of 18, 82, and 80. So for this, we are going to have our hypotenuse as the 82, our opposite as the 18, and our adjacent as the 80. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's 18 over 82. We divide both these by 2. We get 9 over 41. Our cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 80 over 82, which is 40 over 21. I'm sorry, 40 over 41. Our tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that's 18 over 80, so that's 9 over 20. And then our reciprocals of these for cosecant, we're going to have 41 over 9. The secant is 41 over 40. And then our cotangent is 20 over 9. I don't know why I keep writing 20. This is not a 20, it's a 40, I'm sorry. So this is a 40. This is a 40.
for four, we're given side lengths of 25, 65, and 60. So our hypotenuse is the 65. Our adjacent is next to, so that's the 25. And then our opposite is the 60. So sine opposite over hypotenuse, that's 60 over 65. Simplifies by dividing both these by um, 5, we're going to get 12 over 13. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, that's 25 over 65, which simplifies to be 5 over 13. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that's 60 over 25, which is 12 over 5. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so it's 13 over 12. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so it's 13 over 5. And then cotangent is the reciprocal tangent, so it's 5 over 12. For our next section, they are giving us 45, 45, 90 triangles as well as 30, 60, 90 triangles. So with these, you want to remember that your 45, 45, 90 triangles, you can use side lengths of 1, 1, and the square root of 2. And your 30, 60, 90 triangles, your smallest side length is 1, your longest is 2, and the middle is the square root of 3. So with 45, you're given a 45, or sorry, with number 5, you're given a 45, 45, 90 triangle with side lengths of x and 12 square root 2. That 12 square root 2 is your hypotenuse. The 45 gives you that x as your adjacent. So working with adjacent and hypotenuse, that's cosine. Use what they give you, and then use what you're plugging in as well. The 1, 1 square root 2 write down, it'll give you your, your numbers to work with. If we're working cosine, uh, your adjacent is at x, your opposite is at 12 square root 2. If you work with the numbers you wrote down, you wrote down it was 1 and the square root of 2, so it's 1 over the square root of 2. You're going to cross multiply, so we're going to get x square root 2 is equal to 12 square root 2. We divide each side by the square root of 2, and we get that x is 12. For 5, or sorry, for 6, we're given a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we have side lengths of 1, which is our smallest, 2, which is our hypotenuse, and the square root of 3, which is our middle side length. We are given x and 10 square root 3. Our x is our opposite. Our 10 square root 3 is our adjacent. So opposite over adjacent is tangent. So this is going to be x over 10 square root 3 is equal to 1 over the square root of 3. So we cross multiply. And we get x square root 3 is equal to 10 square root 3. We divide each side by the square root of 3. And we get that x is equal to 10. For 7, we have another, another, another 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we're given side lengths of 1. 2, the square root of 3, we are working with opposite and hypotenuse. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. We write down our side lengths here that they give us. That's going to be x over 4 square root 3. The ones we, oh sorry, it's really 4 square root 3 opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is 4 square root 3 over hypotenuse, which is x, is equal to 
What do we plug in? The square root of 3 and 2. So we're going to cross multiply. So we have 8 square root 3 is equal to x square root 3. We're dividing each side by the square root of 3 to get x by itself. And we have that x is equal to 8. For 8, we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So we're, that's giving us 1, 1, and the square root of 2. We have our adjacent and our opposite. So adjacent and opposite is tangent. So plugging our values in that they give us, we're going to have opposite, which is 9, over adjacent, which is x, is equal to 1 over 1. We can cross multiply, and we get that x is equal to 9. For our next one, it gives us a word problem. That word problem says... A conveyor belt builds, oh, sorry, sorry, a conveyor belt leads from the ground to a barn door 24 feet high. So this is where we're getting this 24 from. Uh, the angle between the belt and the ground is 32 degrees. What is the length of the conveyor belt to the nearest foot? All right, so we can draw ourselves this triangle. This triangle will have side lengths of x and 24, and we're working with the 32 degrees. No, so that 30, oh sorry, that 32 degrees tells us that the side length that's opposite of it is the 24, and then the x is our hypotenuse. So if we're working with opposite and hypotenuse, we're working with sine. So we're doing the sine of 32 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which gives us sine. 32 is equal to 24 over x. To get x outside of the denominator, or out of the denominator, we're going to multiply each side by x. So we get x sine 32 is equal to 24. We're going to divide each side by the sine 32. And we get that x is equal to, rounding to the nearest whole number using our calculator 24 divided by sine 32 is equal to 45.28991796 okay so if we're rounding to the nearest foot this is going to be 45 feet for 10 it tells us 85 is a point on the terminal side of theta in standard position Find the exact value of the six trigonometric functions of theta. So 8 is our x, 5 is our y. We are going to find r, so we're going to do x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So x is 8, so that's 8 squared plus y squared, which is 5 squared, is equal to r squared. 8 squared is 64, 5 squared is 25. If we add these, we get 89 is equal to r squared. So take the square root of both sides. r is equal to the square root of 89. So write down all of your values. You have an x of 5, a y, sorry, is it? Yeah, a y is 5, x is 8, x is 8, y is 5, r is the square root of 89. Your sine is y over r, so that's 5 over the square root of 89. You cannot keep the square root of 89 in your denominator, so multiply by the top and the bottom. You're going to have 5 square root 89 over 89. Your cosine is x over r. So x is 8 over r, which is the square root of 89. We're going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 89 to get rid of the radical in the denominator. So this is leaving us with 8 square root 89 over 89. Your tangent 
is y over x. So that's going to give us 5 over 8. Your cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So you're taking the reciprocal of this 5 over the square root of 89. So it's going to be the square root of 89 over 5. Your secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So you're taking the reciprocal of this 8 over the square root of 89. So it's going to be the square root of 89 over 8. And then your reciprocal of tangent is cotangent, which is the reciprocal of the 5 over 8, which is 8 over 5. So writing these all down, we have a sine of 5 over, or sorry, 5 squared 89 over 89. We have a cosine of 8 square root 89 over 89. And we have a tangent of 5 over 8. A cosecant of the square root of 89 over 5 a secant, that is the square root of 89 over 8, and a cotangent of 8 over 5.